Is that it? Okay, great. We're fine. All right. Um, Joe, can we go to the live stream and then we'll start the hearings? There you go. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. This is the time and place set for the Zoning Board of Adjustment for the City of Pittsburgh hearings on April 11th, 2024. And the first case of the morning is Zone Case 41 of 2024 for 285 38th Street. The applicant is identified as Elizabeth Sable. We have Ms. Sable. Could you identify yourself, please? Elizabeth Sable? I am here. This is Elizabeth Sable. Thank you. Um, are there others who are going to be testifying with you this morning? Um, Nate and Lisa Byers should be on the meeting as well. Okay. So the homeowners. And can we get Nate and... All right. So I'm going to ask everybody at the outset, if you think you're going to testify, could you... Uh, Please say yes when I say, do you swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Great. Thank you. Are we hearing from the um, homeowners as well? Yes. yes. <laughs> yeah, we just want to make sure that you're there. And um, for the court reporter's sake, um, if you are speaking, could you identify yourself for the record? But I'm going to ask Mr. Shepke to read this the case in, please. This is zone case 41 of 2024 for 285 38th Street. The application is for the construction of a two story addition with a two car integral to garage, and they're requesting a variance from section 903.03.d.2. A five foot interior side setback is required, and one foot nine inches is proposed. All right. Um, Ms. Sable, are you starting this? Yes. Um, so yes, yeah, so on this um, first slide, you'll see a picture of the front of the house and the proposed side addition is to the right in this photo. As you'll see, there's currently a car parked there. And so it's somewhat of a vacant lot that the owners have currently. And so they're looking to add a two-story addition that would include a garage on the main level and then some bedrooms on the upper level um, to help with that, just that curb appeal of overall of the house. And I, I think we understand the nature of the application. The point is, um, what is the basis for the dimensional variance to allow a one point or one foot nine inch setback as opposed to the five foot that's required? Um, and I, I think what we'd like to understand is what is on that side of the parcel that you'd be getting closer to than would be permitted. Um, that side of the parcel that kind of uh, comes up to a retaining wall that is kind of roughly where the property line is. And the reason we're requesting the variance is the ability to get a full two-car garage into the property. Um, without the variance, we're not able to fully fit two cars into that garage. Well, is that a need or a want? I mean, I guess the the um, the setback uh, requirements exist for a reason. and. Um, only one car um, parking, on-site parking is required. So the proposal to have an additional a two-car garage is, um, you, you could have a one-car garage and comply with the setback, I think is what you're saying. Yes, we could. The street definitely is tight on parking to begin with. And so the homeowners feel the need to have those both of those cars um, on the property and have the ability to park on the property is, is the need that they're requesting. And again, there has to be some hardship associated with the property that justifies the variance, not just a preference to have a two-car garage. But are there other materials that you would like us to look at um, that would support your request? Um, we can flip through the, there's a couple pages to this presentation if you'd like to just flip through. So just some additional photos that we included. Um, and I didn't include photos of the parking on the street, but I think that um, is relevant in this situation. Well, is just that's it. not a hardship associated with the property. So we're really more interested in what the issues are with respect to the property. What okay. is what is on the parcel immediately adjacent to where you're proposing to have a 
one foot nine inch setback? Um, Nate and Lisa, feel free to bounce into this question too. But right now there is on this survey, you can see it listed. There's a block wall between the two properties and then there's a, a single family residence next door. So you would, it, does the single family residence on the adjacent parcel um, extend to the property lines or does it comply with the setback requirements? Can you answer that, Nate and Lisa? Uh, and could yeah. you identify yourself for the record when you're speaking, please? Uh, yeah, this is Nate Byers. Um, the house next door um, is offset. There is a driveway running alongside it uh, on the side of the the adjacent property closest to our house. And can you explain the topography that requires the retaining wall between the driveway and the um, property line? Or it's not the, the retaining wall is on the property line? Uh, this is Nate speaking again. Um, the, the property is built on a hillside, um, so it's sloping down. The retaining wall is to prevent um, or, or to, uh, I guess, make sure that the driveway next door is uh, level. Um, and the retaining wall is on the neighbor's property um, with the, the very start of it kind of um, making up the property line. Well, when you say it's sloping, is it sloping side to side, front to back? I mean, are this, there any this drawings? Is one, this is one of the streets in Lawrenceville that kind of goes up the hill. It's not on the flatter section of Lawrenceville. It's kind of going up the hill. And so this property next to theirs is just a little bit further up the hill than their property, which is why the retaining wall is there. Does that make sense? It, it does. And I apologize. There's a lag from when we speak to when you speak and or to when you hear what we're saying. So I, I feel sometimes like I'm talking over you and I apologize for that. Um, well, I guess is uh, the, have you um, discussed what you're proposing to do with that immediate neighbor? This is Nate speaking again. Um, I, we have not spoken to them. Uh, we, we did post the notice on our property, uh, but, uh, we've talked to the folks who rent the property there, um, about the proposed addition, um, but not the owner himself. Uh, he lives out of state. Okay. Okay. Um, are, are there other materials that we should be looking yep, at? If, yeah, feel free. We did include a, um, since there is a tree that we're removing there. So we did include a landscape plan. Also, we included this um, slide that you're looking at right now is the front elevation of the proposed addition showing that two car garage um, with the bedrooms above. Um, you can move to the next slide. This is the, just a side elevation of what that addition is going to look like. How it's proposed, is that what you just said? Yep, yeah, the proposed addition. So this is the proposed floor plan. The proposed second floor plan. Do you have any materials that um, depict the slope that you were discussing or the retaining wall? I mean, the, again, for a variance, we're supposed to be looking at whether there's a hardship associated with the property that prevents compliance with the setback. And it, this, what you're saying is that you want a two car garage. You could comply with the setback if you didn't want a two car garage. So um, we have to take a look at whether that the relief you're requesting is appropriate for this particular site. So we're trying to understand the full context. Um, and, and part of that is the topography and you know, what else is going on? I, where is the neighboring house? I mean, I, I don't think we had a photograph of the driveway or anything like that. I think that's- I would say there's a slide with three photos. That's probably the best ones that I included of what you're asking for. Um, that's, uh, I go like back the other way up. Yeah, there's down one more, that one. Um, I guess that kind of the retaining wall in that bottom left, that's where you can see where that car is parked. That's where the retaining wall is currently. So the, but the, the car is parked on the neighbor's property. No, that's, that's their property. That's where the addition will be going. 
where the addition is proposed. And Correct. so the, the tree would have to be removed. Is that what the other photo was was indicating? Yep, there's two trees on that um, photo that were that bottom left photo, and we need to remove both of those. And so we included the landscape plan of what how we're planning to replace those. That's I have to say that's not really helping me to understand where the um, proposed addition would be in relation to the driveway, the retaining wall, and the other house. Um, would you be able to submit some additional photos that would describe that a little bit more fully? Yeah. What, um, how do you need us to submit those? Do you need us to email them like immediately right now? Them, yes, you can send them to Mr. Shepke. Ms. Madam Hemp Chair, yeah. I uh, would like to see a little bit of setback, uh, you know, maybe someone taking photos across the street to understand the slope. Is that slope going west to east? Uh, is that slope going, you know, if the front of the house were it's north to, to south, because I'm having trouble also understanding left, right, up, down. Okay. Side, I'll take side. it. Yeah. Exactly. I, mean, it's, I think we need to have a better understanding of the context. And also, I mean, are there any other structures in the immediate vicinity that have similarly reduced side setbacks? I mean, this does not appear to be a portion of Lawrenceville where um, the houses are practically attached. So, I mean, it, so asking for um, less than half of, of the setback that's required, like we, we need to understand that in the context of what's around you. So basically it sounds like if we go, like we go above the house and kind of shoot from there and then just go like straight across the street and shoot from there and then go below the house and what, shoot from what, there. I was going to say, whatever you think would help um, allay some of our confusion here. So I, sure. I think that would be helpful. Mr. Richardson, did you have any additional questions? No, I don't have any questions. Okay. Um, I'm going to turn to the list of attendees. Um, is there anybody who is attending this morning who would like to comment with respect to the application for 285 38th Street? If you do, please raise your hand. And I am seeing no hands raised. So um, if you could submit those additional photos, we will accept the exhibits as part of the record, and then we will issue a decision within the time permitted under the code. Okay, wonderful. We'll get those over to Shepke today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thank you all for being here this morning. All right. Um, the next case of the morning is zone case 49 of 2024 for 520 Susanna Court. Um, the applicant is identified as Brenda Bonacci. Do we have a Brenda Bonacci, please? Or somebody um, who's appearing for the applicant for Susanna Court? Hello, um, are we on right now? Sorry, um, you'll, could you repeat that please? Hello, I just wanna make sure we are connected. My name is Joe DC. Joe. I'm here as well. But... DC, D-E-A-S-Y. Okay, so I'm seeing Brenda. Brenda's here as okay, well. Are yes. you together in the same place? All right, yes. That, yes. that helps us understand. Um, are you the Thanks. only two who are going to be testifying on behalf of the applicant? Yes. All right. Do you, each of you swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes. Yes. Uh, Mr. Shepke, could you read the case in, please? This is zone case 49 of 2024 for 520 Susanna Court. The application is for the construction of an addition on the rear of a single family residence and they're requesting a variance from section 903.03.c.2. A 30 foot exterior side setback is required and five feet is requested. All right, and um, I didn't mention this before, but as you're speaking, if you could identify yourself for the court reporter, that would be helpful. Um, and I think you may have heard from the last case, um, it's a 30 foot side yard um, requirement and you're requesting five feet for an addition. So we'd like to understand what's unique about the property and why, uh, how you think the variance would be supported. Um, great. Okay. Um, 
Good morning, everyone. Uh, my name is Joe DC. I am a contractor and also the brother of Brenda Benaki. Um, I've been doing the construction, but the have been dealing in uh, issues with uh, building within the city for uh, multiple years. Um, but what we are looking for is that setback um, because that's in the regular shape corner. Well, we, and... Okay. Now we have the, the um, I, I don't know if you're seeing what we're seeing, but uh, yes. the site plan just came up. And... Yes. Okay, there's a site plan right there. Yes, correct. So you can see the shaded area is the proposed addition. And the orientation of the existing structure is facing Susanna Court. That is the front of the uh, building. So we're trying to establish, I, I guess, a side yard setback on McCaslin Street of five feet. Um, the... the uh, the irregularity of the lot, you could see only uh, currently the, the, the back so, corner of the building. Yes. Yeah, and and I, I, again, I apologize. There is a lag. So my questions sometimes run over what you're actually saying. Mm -hmm. So you do have a triangular shaped lot with the, the front is on Susanna Court. And the right now, the existing structure... Um, extends back to the smaller part of the triangle. What is the largest exterior side setback? I mean, do you have the full 30 feet at Susanna Court and then it tapers back to um, the a, a smaller um, setback as you go towards the rear of the house? But what is what is the um, currently the, the setback at the rear of the house? Currently, the smallest setback on my Caslin side is 18.6 feet. So you're proposing to go from that 18 point, and it, does it, am I correct in assuming that the you comply with the full 30 feet at the front of the house? Correct. Actually, the front corner of the house is showing 33.67 feet. And then, um, so when you're proposing to have the five foot rear setback at that back corner, that's um, about as far, it, it's about halfway um, down McCaslin Street from that intersection. Right. Uh, okay. And the, um, can you explain, because part of the reason for an exterior side setback is to ensure that there's not, um, the, a structure is not impeding vision on the street um, and traffic issues at an intersection. So uh, visually, can you, do you have any way of depicting what that would look like from the intersection? From the, uh, from the following pictures, there are some pictures of the street, the house, and the proposal of where the addition is going to be. So that is looking down, uh, actually standing in the intersection uh, looking down the street, which is a dead end street. Which which is a dead end street, Susanna or McCaslin? McCaslin. Okay. And what's the what's what's the next structure over um, from as you uh, down McCaslin? If you're looking at the uh, pictures on the lower left picture. Yeah. On the lower left, you can see a structure behind the building. Yes. Uh, that is one of the houses. There's there's only two houses uh, behind uh, Brenda's house on that where we propose the addition. Okay. And McCaslin goes down a hill? Is that? Yes, it is going downhill. Correct. And, and is the place where you're proposing to put the addition from these photographs um, in the same general uh, location as the deck? Yes. If you look at the picture on the right-hand side, uh, top top right, you can see a bay window. Uh, mm -hmm. and that addition is coming off of the bay window, oh. directly off the back of the house from where that bay window is. As proposed. Got it. Yes, as proposed, yes. Are there other materials that you would like us to take a look at? 
Um, no, just the uh, really the, the best contextual drawing uh, for you to see would be the one, the uh, which was the first one we looked at that shows the shaded area. These are just pictures of the uh, proposed addition, which is a working proposal because they're not sure what the exact uh, setback is going to be required and where they can go. So they're just looking at um, ideas right now. Uh, the only other thing that I would maybe want to like uh, present that just in the case that uh, for some reason she was not able to get the proposed seven, uh, uh, five foot setback, which at this point we just went to the full extent of five feet because uh, it, we, it could be within, you, you know, seven It might be feet. more is what you're saying. It might be, it might be, it will, it won't be any more than the five foot which we need because as the street goes down, depending on how far they come out with the house, uh, that could vary. So okay. we, uh, um, I did pull up one thing on the code. I don't know if this is going to be relevant or not. Um, it would be section 925.06C. Uh, it was under the contextual side yard setbacks. Uh, the last paragraph reading, regardless of the setbacks of adjacent structures for any single house on a recorded zoning lot that is less than 60 feet in width. Um, my question is, I don't, at points, this is 60 feet or less. So I'm not exactly sure of the interpretation of that paragraph. That we'll, we'll take a look at it. I, 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 I mean, the, the question is: Is it the frontage? It's the side. Uh, what is that? The length of the parcel, as opposed to the width of the parcel. We'll, we'll take a look. Um, and, okay, great. But um, I want to turn first to the other board members to see if you have any questions with respect to this. No additional questions, Madam Chair. Okay. No questions. And uh, do we have anybody attending who would like to comment with respect to the application for 520 Susanna Court? All right. Seeing no hands raised, uh, we'll close this hearing. We'll accept the exhibits as part of the record, and we will issue a decision within the time permitted under the code. Thank you very much. Thank you very, right, very much. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, the next case of the morning is zone case 51 okay. of 2024 for 838 Concord Street. I don't want um, much anything. I thought I saw uh, <laughs> whoever, um, if Ms. Benazzi, or, uh, you need to go off. There we go. Um, I thought I saw Mr. Roth here. Uh, Mr. Roth, it's my understanding that um, you're going to request a continuance with respect to the application for 838 Concord Street. Is that correct? Um, good morning, everybody. Can you hear me? Yes. Great. I am actually in the car right now headed to a family funeral, so I apologize for any scheduling challenges here. Um, I do have with me the building owner, Nick Katek who is very familiar with the process. And I um, think that we could go ahead and have him present. And if there's anything else that comes up, we'll take it from there. Okay, we have Nicola Katik on as well. So I'm gonna, if, so are you saying that you would prefer to proceed with the hearing today and not request a continuance? I, I think so, that would be great. Okay, um, could I ask you both then to swear in? Um, could we have Nick Katik, um, can we, could you just say something so that we know that you're there? Yes. Good morning, everybody. My name is Nikola Kantich, and I'm here to support this project. All right. Well, um, I'm first going to ask if you swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Yes, yes. I do. All right. So, Daniel, could you read the case in, please? This is on case 51 of 2024 for 838 Concord Street. The application is for the addition of one dwelling unit in an existing multi-unit residential building with five units. And there's requesting a special exception pursuant to section 921.02.a.1 to allow the enlargement of a non-conforming use uh, from five units to six units. All right, um, Mr. Roth and Mr. Katik, uh, who's gonna speak on behalf of the applicant here? You know what, I can make a brief remark because I'm actually in traffic here and hands-free. And so let me just make a brief remark and then um, we can go ahead and um, 
you know, quickly present the drawings. Okay. Uh, we've been work, yeah, we've been working with uh, staff, and I do think that we meet the requirements for not increasing the nonconformity beyond what's permitted. And uh, and again, just for the record, I did my best to reach out to the community groups. I did contact the neighborhood planner. She was very helpful, and uh, the neighborhood groups were. Um, they got back to me, but we were never able to meet up on the project. It seemed like, uh, again, in the big scheme of things, this does not seem to be a high impact project. So, um, you know, if necessary, Mr. I just want you to Mr. know Mr. that. You know, yeah. I, and again, I apologize for the lag. You know a heck of a lot more about this project than we do. I don't even know where it is. And all I know is that it's um, existing five units and you want to have a sixth unit. And, and what does the building look like? How does the sixth unit fit in? Um, are there exhibits that we should be looking at to understand where this parcel is? You should have them. Well, can you, I, I know I understand that you're in the car, but could you guide us through what we should be looking at? The bottom portion um, of the right where the garage door is. That, I have one page that has a rendering of a, what looks like an attached three-story structure. Is that is that the only exhibit that we're supposed to be looking at? It, it, it's not. I had sent in a four-page exhibit presentation. Okay. All right. So can you, can you tell us a little bit about where this structure is located and how it became a non-conforming multi-unit use in a R1 AVH district? Yes, yeah, in the spring garden area of the north side. And it's my understanding that this is what we would call a pre one-stop project, because I think it dates back originally from 2018 or sometime. And so I had requested from zoning any records that they had about how it was initially approved and i've not received any of that well so i don't really have any knowledge about how this was approved but if we have an occupancy permit for that, five units yeah. and and okay. the the space that we're talking about is a vacant tenant space that we're now trying to, to turn into a sixth unit was it a vacant commercial tenant space Correct. It was a vacant. It was, well, it was a vacant space that had no occupancy. Okay. So the cert, what date is the certificate of occupancy? It, 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 you know, again, I, I apologize because um, I'm not able to tell you that right. No, I, I understand. I mean, it, it, again, so there's a certificate of occupancy from some date that identifies five residential units. And there's a, a additional space that looks like it might've been a storefront at one point. And that is what you're proposing to change to an additional residential unit. That's correct. Okay. So there's a photograph that is showing um, parking that extends along the side of the building. <clears throat> is that parking for this multi-unit residential use? Indeed. Okay. And are there sufficient spaces in that parking area, which I'm not quite sure how that was approved, but I'm not going there. Um, is there sufficient space in there for one parking space per unit? In, in there is. Six units. Okay. Uh, the certificate number for the occupancy is 18B00303, and it was issued on April 18, 2021. Okay, but um, from the architect's perspective, um, can, is there any way of dating this building? I mean, it looks like it could be early 1900s, um, and is there any internal construction that would lead you to believe that it was in it was originally built to be a five unit um, residential building with a uh, tenant space in the front I mean on the first floor it's actually my understanding that they were two 
buildings that are now combined into one. Okay. And that one building had three units. The other building had two units with this commercial space on the first floor, none of which ever had occupancy. But is there anything that dates the building? I mean, do, do you know when it was originally constructed? I believe the oh, building no. was constructed in, in early 1900s. And is there, just with respect to that, um, the tenant space on the first floor, does it have um, a sec separate utilities, separate electrical meters, separate gas? Um, it, it's, it, what are the indications that that's been a separate space all along? Everything is separated in the entire building. Okay. Um, all right. I don't have any other questions. Any questions for the applicant here? No additional questions, Madam Chair. All right. I'm going to turn to the list of attendees. Um, is there anybody attending this morning who would like to comment with respect to the application for 838 Concord Street? And I am not seeing any hands raised. So we will accept the exhibits as part of the record and we will issue a decision um, within the time permitted under the code. So Mr. Roth, be safe in traffic and uh, we're gonna close the record for this hearing. Thank you very, Thank you very much. much everybody. Thank you for being here. Bye bye. All right, uh, the next case of the morning is zone case 52 of 2024 for 1118 North St. Clair Street. Um, the applicant is identified as Remy Marischal. Do we have um, the applicant? We do. Yes, I am here. Hi, everyone. Do you, is there anybody else who's going to be testifying with you this morning? No, just me. And do you swear or for, firm that the information that you'll provide to the board this morning will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. All right. Thank you. Mr. Shepke, could you read the case in, please? This is case 52 of 2024 for 1118 North St. Clair Street. The application is for the expansion of a front yard parking pad, and they're requesting a variance from section 912.04.L, which prohibits front yard parking. All right. Um, we have your materials, so if you could explain what it is. Is this something, um, I'm, I always hate to ask, but is this something that you've already put in and now you've coming to the board and asking for forgiveness instead of the permission that you were required to request at the outset? Yes, that is correct. <clears throat> um, so for context, um, we have an LLC that's called Blue House Capital LLC. Uh, and we purchased the house um, in September of 2023. And uh, we- and Can you, I mean, just because you know the property better than we do, can, um, all I know is that it's on North St. Clair Street. So can you give us a little bit of a context of, is there a, a, an aerial view or um, um, something to locate the, the house? Uh, I didn't put that in my presentation, I'm sorry. But basically it's- uh, on the block um, that is um, perpendicular to Bryan Street, where the restaurants are, uh, I don't know. I don't know if that helps. Well, it's Highland Park, um, but yeah. and we're seeing the the photo at the front of the house. So you purchased the house in 2023. Yes, and, and um, we discovered that there were like big plumbing issues um, from the house to the uh, city. Um, system um sorry i'm not familiar with like all the technical terms but um we had to uh, dig a big hole in front of the house so on the front yard where the um, grass was uh, and uh, basically the whole grass had to go out and there were like very old uh, beautiful rose bushes that we had to uh, dig out and uh, transplant uh, at the back of the in the backyard uh, to save them uh, and uh, so when the plumbing company put the dirt back it was like very disrupted like uh, bad dirt uh, kind of 
being on top of uh, what could be. I, I understand you're telling a story, but basically what, yeah. after you did the plumbing work, you paved it over and have been using it as parking. Yes. Is that a fair uh, summary? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, was there ever parking in front of the house previously or um, the first time it was dug out and paved over was when it, you had this plumbing issue? Uh, there was one part that was already uh, with concrete. If you see on the left picture where the excavator is, uh, there is concrete beneath it. So there was kind of like one parking spot there um, that uh, is still there. Okay. Is there is there an approved curb cut for that parking space? Um, we I. Uh, requested uh, no I, I'm, I'm asking for if there had been one parking space or one concrete area on the parcel previously um had was there an approved curb cut for um that concrete area i'm not sure but there was uh like a uh a, a curb cut uh, already um on the sidewalk so I would guess it it had been approved previously. I, I not necessarily, but okay. Okay. you don't you don't have any indication of, to, as to whether. Um, all right. So um, yeah, so the request here is to be able to um, maintain the full concrete and to use front yard and to use it for two parking spaces. Yes. Is the um, structure on the property currently being used for two residential units? Uh, as of now, uh, it's there's only one tenant in there, uh, but eventually, yes, there would be two. It, well, it's, the, it's in an R2 district where two units would be permitted, but was, yes. it, was the house originally designed um, for two units? Yes. You only currently have one tenant. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and is there any, I mean, you've already done it and that we, we really, that, that, that's not our preferred way of doing things. And, um, it, it's, it, when you do something like that, you do it at risk that, um, the board could require you to only use it for one parking space. So what is the, um, basis for your request for a variance? that it's already done or do you yes, have any? Uh, uh, well, well, a few things like first, when I asked the contractor who uh, did the work, he assured me that there was no parking, uh, no permitting request uh, needed for that uh, because there was no like change on the curb cut on the sidewalk. So, you know, it's my bad to not have double checked it, but uh, I'm, I'm saying this to show uh, that I was in good faith of, you know, asking the contractor, he uh, didn't know what he was doing or he just wanted the, the job, you know? Um, so he did the thing and then he disappeared. Um, so that's kind of uh, one of the reasons why I, I'm asking after the fact and, uh, you know, I'm asking for forgiveness about this having been done uh, uh, without me knowing that we had to do all those uh, permits. Is there any way that the um, appearance of having two parking spaces at the front of the parcel could be mitigated? Is there, um, you said you um, removed a bunch, of, and I understand that it was re in relation to the plumbing, but, um, and the rose bushes went from the front to the back. Is there any way of improving the appearance of the parcel? Um, Yes, I think there is actually like on the very um, front, like uh, just behind that little uh, wall, um, there's space to put like a nice uh, landscaping items that would uh, make it more uh, pleasing to the eye. But uh, from the diagram that you're showing us, you're not proposing to have an expanded curb cut across the front of the parcel you're you're proposing to maintain just the existing curb cut correct okay um did you have any other information or that you would like to provide to the board 
Um, we we have the materials that you sent, and we will we will take a look at those. But um, maybe uh, one bit of information is that we recently repainted the fence uh, that is to the right side of the property, uh, which looks uh, nicer. So that can uh, show you our willingness to, uh, you know, improve the looks rather than uh, uh, make them look worse. Um, I don't have any other questions for the applicant, um, Ms. Burton Falker. No additional questions. Okay. <clears throat> um, we're going to turn to our list of attendees. Um, we have a few hands raised. Okay. We now have four hands raised. So I'm going to st start at the top with um, Stephanie Walsh. Ms. Walsh. Hi, thank you. Can you stop, pause for a moment? Um, do you swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Thank you. Uh, thank you. I'm Stephanie Walsh. I'm the president of the Highland Park Community Council. We're the registered community organization for the neighborhood. Uh, we were informed by the about this project by um, neighbors who have complained about the paving of the front yard. And we submitted a letter um, in opposition to allowing this variance and requesting that the yard be restored. We did submit um, additional photographs. I don't know if it's possible to have those presented or if you have them in front of you, but the visual impact is quite jarring. This is a residential street. All the properties have that setback. I'm not sure how many feet it is, 30 or 40 feet from the curb with, there you go, there are my pictures. A couple of them have single um, parking pads, but the majority do not. It's very much a green, grassy residential street. And essentially they have made a parking lot in front of this house. You can see if you scroll down the pictures, putting in some landscaping behind that, you know, 18 inch or two foot stone wall is not really gonna hide um, the impact of having these vehicles and all that cement um, in front of this property. Um, we are a national historic district. We value the zoning regulations that, you know, try to limit parking in front yards in order to help maintain the character of the neighborhood. Uh, I also want to point out that um, we were not approached about this change. And also, um, this is not, um, a pro this property is not owned by an individual who plans to use this property for, for their own um, residence. Oh, it, uh, it is this is, they own district. seven properties. Um, it, Ms. Walsh, just, I, I have a couple of questions. First of all, it is an R2 district. So um, mm -hmm. we, I understand your point about the owner won't necessarily live there, but it is an R2 district where you're allowed to have rental units. So, right. mm -hmm. um, but you're, um, you, you had indicated that at least part of Highland Park is in a national historic district. Is this street or this property within that district? My understanding is our entire neighborhood is in is a historic district. And the point about it being a rental is is that, you know, my understanding is that um, twenty five percent of residential property purchases in the city are going to commercial developers, and that's what this owner is. This is a commercial developer. They do not have a vested we interest in our neighborhood. Commercial developers. So I, I, I mean, I, again, I understand your point, but uh, the, the city doesn't prohibit um, commercial developers. Right. But to say this was done in good faith, like if they should know better. Well, <laughs> and I think we need to hold them to strict, to strict standards. If they're just coming in and doing things in the neighborhood and their only concern is turning a profit and not actually in personally invested in the quality of in the character of the neighborhood. All right. we, and you, you said that you had submitted materials for the board to consider from the um, Highland Park Community Council. Right. That's what this letter is that's being shown right now. All right. And we will we will take that into account. Um, it just you, you are here on behalf of the Community Council. Uh, you're not an immediate um, neighbor of this parcel. Correct. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to move to the others who have their hand raised, unless you had something additional to add. Like I said, we'll look at your letter as part of the record. Sure. Yeah. We just, I don't know if that parking pad, the original one was permitted. If it is, we request that they 
restore the site to the former footprint of the parking pad in the lawn. But if it wasn't permitted, we would just request that the entire yard get put back to a, a lawn. Thank you very much. All right, thank you for your testimony. Um, uh, the next person with a hand raised is Joe Sorrell. Mr. Sorrell? Yes, can you, do you hear swear, me? Do you swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Can you explain what your position is with respect to this application? Yeah, I own a house at 1120 North St. Clair, directly adjacent to 1118. To the, if you're looking at that picture, immediately to the left. Um, the house, uh, the house has had a parking, the single parking pair where that Nissan is for 40 years. The parking pad was, was installed literally 40 or 50 years ago. Um, the house, my understanding is going to be a four unit residential, not a two unit, uh, number one, number two, um, when they removed the dirt, it could have been easily, uh, installed the ground. I'm obviously opposed. Um, and the second, my, my last point is it's dysfunctional, um, to be able to park two cars there. You'd have to move one car. There's no way for two cars to work in there. And contrary to the gentleman's, uh, statement that it's 100% paved in concrete. There's no place to plant anything, even if he wanted to. So short answer is that we're opposed to it. Uh, and I, we did a, I did a short canvas of Highland Park the entire Highland Park neighborhood. Uh, there's no no property in Highland Park that has a 100% paved lot like this, zero. And number and the last point is, this is in the National Historic District. I can state that unequivocally. Um, well, there, there, two units would be permitted, four units wouldn't would not be, or it would have to be a continuing. Do, Mr. Stroud, do you have any history of uh, the use of the par property for yeah. two units? Yeah, that was uh, actually it was Councilman and State Senator Furlow's house. And he rented the second floor to his nephew. So if you want to consider that a two unit, but it was fundamentally a, um, it was always two units from as long as I've lived there. And I've lived there since 1968. Um, it's always been two units. And again, it's in an R2 district. So Correct. yeah. Yeah, and that's, I have no complaint with the two units. It's permitted. I obviously understand that. But our conversation with the contractors and the people who work there is that they're converting into four units, one in the basement, one on the first floor, one on the second floor, one on the third floor. And again, that's my understanding of discussions with the people who work there. And I think that's the reason this parking pad went in. But that's, again, that, I don't have any confirmation of that. But that there's been a tremendous amount of work done in a house. Okay, um, and we appreciate your testimony. And we'll did you have exhibits as well, Mr. Sorrell? Or yeah, I submitted it to. Um, I should have three pictures of one with the the precondition, one during, and then one with the cars parked on it. So I did submit it to staff. Okay, well, and we'll accept those as part of the record as well. Um, right. It. The next um, hand raised is from James Rooney. Mr. Rooney? Yes, good morning. And do you swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? Yes, I do. Can you explain your position with respect to this application? Yes. Uh, like the previous two callers, I'm opposed to this as well. For many of the same reasons, I live across the street. So again, I'm a, I'm a neighbor. I look at this every single day, every day, every time I leave my house, I see this. And as other people have said, we live in a primarily green lawn neighborhood. There are no other places that have their entire yard paved like this in the neighborhood. Um, and seeing as this was a contractor and somebody who has who owns multiple units across the city, they should know better than this. Um, and so my feeling is that they willfully ignored the rule because of greed. You can charge a whole lot more for an apartment if it comes with a parking space. But we're not in the business of ascribing motivation. So uh, oh. but your concern is with respect to um, use of the entire front yard for a contract. Correct. Yes. And I think it sends a bad signal to let developers who are doing a lot in our city right now to 
claim they made a mistake and ask for forgiveness later. I would encourage this body to hold them to the rules and to not allow them a variance in this instance. It does not go with the neighborhood at all. All right. Thank you very much for your testimony. We appreciate that. Did you um, submit a written statement as well, Mr. Rooney? Yes, I did. All right. And we will accept that as part of the record as well. Thank you. Um, we have a hand raised from Nancy Goering. Goering? Apologize. Could you identify yourself, please? You'll have to unmute. Sorry. <laughs> yes, I'm, I'm Nancy Goring. And do you swear or affirm that the information that you'll provide to the board today will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. And can you explain what your position is with respect to this application? Yes, I am also in opposition to the variance being granted. Um, I, I also live on the block. Um, and, I, you know, I don't want to repeat everything. I pretty much agree with what everyone else has already said. Um, but I did want to bring up two additional points. And one is, um, you know, the environmental impact of allowing this to, um, you know, continue the way it is, which just contributes to runoff, which is already a big, you know, issue in the city in terms of water management when we've got heavy rains. Um, you know, the city is is trying to do the opposite of this, which is, you know, have more green so that, um, you know, it absorbs the water rather than just runs off and, and causes more problems. Um, and then the other thing I just wanted to mention is, you know, I've seen many other neighbors in the neighborhood have to dig up their front yard for plumbing issues and they restore the greenery. So, you know, I don't think that that's a good excuse for allowing the variance that the guy had to tear up the front yard. Like that's not, I, I don't think that should be a reason to grant a variance. Other people have, have restored the, a lawn rather than paved it over. All right. And and thank you very much for your testimony, Ms. Gehring, and thank you for not repeating um, what others said. Um, we have another hand raised from David Hans. Mr. Hans, could you unmute yourself, please? I am unmuted. Uh, you could you, wait, uh, do you swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. To the point of certificate of occupancy. Can you, can you tell uh, us where you live and what your particular, and if you have additional concerns as opposed to those that have already been expressed? Yeah, I live at 917 North Negley, so I'm just outside the, the zone of, um, of, of standing, but a uh, long time involvement in community development. Uh, I'll offer these comments just as, a, as an individual. Uh, I, I, and I've spoken with a number of the neighbors uh, who, are, who have already testified. Um, to the point of certificate of occupancy, uh, the existing certificate of occupancy dates to 2009. It is for a two-unit dwelling. Uh, there is no, uh, there is no permission. There is no, uh, and there was no uh, reference or mention of any front yard parking. So, even the existing uh, uh, prior driveway and curb cut uh, uh, appears to have been un, uh, unpermitted to begin with. Uh, so well, Mr. Sorrell said that it had been there for 20, 40 years at least. So, I mean, we'll, we'll look at the issue, but thank you for giving us the date of the certificate of occupancy. And I agree with prior comments, so I have nothing to add there. And I was going to say, and, and, and Mr. Hans, if, if um, you acknowledge that you're not immediately affected, we appreciate your community concerns, but um, there there are others, I think, who have direct standing in this matter who have spoken. So Sure, just pointing you to the certificate of occupancy. All right, and thank you for that. Um, Ms. Walsh, you've, you've already spoken, but you have your hand raised again. Is there anything else that you wanted to add? Um, I would just want to note, um, it sounds like the second speaker said that the contractor is saying that they're redeveloping the property as a four-unit property, even though that's not how it's zoned. So it appears that it's possible that they're going to come back for a retroactive permit to make that a four unit property as well. So there's, again, a dangerous trend here that we're seeing of developers asking for retroactive variances after doing the work that we would like to discourage. And I will say that we live it in a build at your own risk state. So um, I'm going to turn this back to Mr. Marischal. Uh, do, would you like to respond briefly to the comments that have been raised uh, this morning? Yes. Uh, so first thing, uh, I want to apologize for like the, um, 
the damage that has been done to the, the front yard uh, made of lawn. Uh, again, uh, stating that it was in good faith, like uh, thinking that would be a good remediation to that whole uh, dig up and also uh, potentially help the street with like removing some uh, off on street parking. Um, but uh, as regards to the, the zoning, I am very aware that it's a two, uh, two unit dwelling uh, and we are not uh, planning on making it a four unit dwelling. Um, so I don't know uh, where this information came from, but that's not the case. Um, and um, and with regards to uh, having no space to planting uh, anything else, I agree with the comment that was made, but I was thinking of, uh, you know, like uh, big uh, pots with uh, bushes inside of them or this kind of, uh, you know, ornamental um, vegetation that could improve the looks without uh, having to remove the concrete pad. And right. uh, also, uh, last comment, um, I know that, uh, you know, there's uh, people that have mentioned greed and, you know, uh, things like that, but we did make a lot of work in that house and restore it to uh, its uh, original features, um, architectural features that are, uh, that had been hidden in the past that are now like back to uh, former uh, beauty. So uh, we are not after greed, uh, we are more after like uh, putting things uh, as they should. Uh, I know the <laughs> concrete pad is not a good example of that, but the house itself is uh, has been restored um, as it was originally. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for your testimony this morning. Thank you, Mr. Marshall, for your response. Um, the board will um, take all of the exhibits and all of the testimony into consideration, and we will issue a decision within the time permitted under the code. So thank you all for being here this morning. Thank you. All right. We are going to move on to the next case of the morning, which is uh, zone case 53 of 2024 for 7710 Forest Way. The applicant is Mark Hummel. You can know, come on up this way. Um, just for the people online, we actually have an applicant in the room, which is nice to see. Come on, but come on up. <laughs> yeah. I, I I can't account for that, but um, we're we're delighted to see you. So pull up a chair. Come, come over and talk to us. Oh, okay. There you go. And then you'll be on mic with us. So um, before you sit down, do you swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do, so help me God. There you go. Thank you. Um, Mr. Shepke, could you read the case in, please? Uh, this is zone case 53 of 2024 for 7710 Forest Way. The application is for a subdivision, and they're requir requesting a variance from section 926.129. Frontage on a street is required uh, and creation of a lot without street frontage is proposed. And just so I'm clear that the only, the, there's not an issue about the lot size. It's just a question of whether this can be a split lot with one frontage on um, Frankstown Avenue and the other on Forest Way. Is that correct? That's correct. And if you could identify yourself for the court reporter, I think that would be helpful. My name's Mark Hummel. I'm a licensed land surveyor or the Parkers. And um, do you, we have the, the landscape or the subdivision plan here. Um, it's not the subdivision plan, ma'am. Okay, sorry, it's a site plan. It's an existing plan. Okay, so, and so, but there is a, um, from the existing conditions depiction, there's an existing two-story building on the Forest Way side, that's correct? Yes, that is correct. Is there any structure on the Frankstown Avenue side? Back in 2010, there was a house that was set back from the right-of-way there considerably. Um, going back to Google Earth, at 2011, it was no longer there. It may have burnt down or been torn down for some other reason. So the, the, the purpose of this subdivision um, would be to create 
separate lots so you could have a structure on each building in um, different ownership. That is correct. And that's what the Parkers are hoping this is going to be part of their retirement plan. Okay. And the, um, the, could you give us a little information about the conditions along Forest Way? Are there other residential structures, other split lots with the same condition of having frontage on Forest Way? Uh, the one adjacent to it, uh, as you're looking at the drawing, immediately to the left, there is a house apartment there. Yes, it's two-story also on that side. Uh, there is a business in the front, then split to the back. It is a The Parkers also own the back parcel there, but this is not a part of the application. No, I'm just understanding. I'd like oh, to understand, understand the, the um, it, but going down Forest Way, are these the only two parcels that are split or are there others? That is correct. At the present time, um, that is the only conditions there. Do we have any um, photos of the, oh, there we go. Okay. That's the front on Frankstown Way. Frankstown Road. Uh, right, Frank Frankstown Avenue, yes. Frankstown Avenue, okay. And then the um, it's extending to the rear. What's on the opposite side of of forest? On the opposite side, um, there is on if you're looking on forest on the left hand side, there's a dilapidated. Uh, well, there's there's a house there also in the back, but it's it's owned by the Parkers. Uh, on both the left and the right side, the Parkers own, and there's a house on each one of those parcels. Okay. On the other side of that Parker property is a lack of better terms a unit of a business that's pretty run down uh, it's got leaky roof uh, but it, it's sort of a it sounds like it, it's in an lnc district but it's a, a, a mixture of uses exactly it's a mixed use area yes but the, it is an lnc district uh, what are the on the opposite side of forest way um or residential what but what's the street i mean you, you have the shared forest way at the rear do you, yes. do you know what the street frontage is on the other side? Is it Hamilton or and what's the through street on the other side? You, I'm not sure. Okay, all right, we'll we'll look it up. I, I'm just I'm curious about the the full district. That's that well, hence my question. It needs some help. I'll just say it that way. Okay. All right. I don't have any other questions. No additional questions. Well. Okay. I have a couple statements here. Um, the Parker's purchase is back in 2000, um, and. Basically, as I stated previously, uh, between 2010 and 2011, the house on the front on Frankstown Avenue was removed. Uh, the garage apartment in the rear has been there for years, and it, it, it's existing. Uh, they wanted to restore this piece of property in the front to what it was like, similar to 10 years ago, to have a house in the front and a house in the rear. Thus, why they want to split it so they can sell one and, and keep the other. Uh, as a side note, because of the uh, ongoing tax issue, revenue shortfall that the city has come up with, this would only increase. It would give you another tax basis. I, would say I understand. It, it's not a big. This is a side note. I, I, I appreciate that, but it, it's not within the jurisdiction of the zoning board to make decisions based on that. So. Um, what I would like to do is to turn to our list of attendees online to see if there is anybody who would like to comment, raise their hand with respect to the application for Forest Way. And I am not seeing any hands raised. So we'll close the record with your testimony and the exhibits that you provided. And thank you very, thanks for coming in person. Yes. I appreciate that. All right on to the next case for the morning um which is he didn't he didn't even hurt you thank you <laughs> uh, the next case of the morning is zone case 46 of 2024 for 62 south 6th street um uh, we have morovic architects as the applicant who who've we got Hello, Max Mavrovic from Mavrovic Architects and Mike Knockle from Mavrovic Architects and other attendees also. All right. So what I'd, I'd, I, when you say other attendees, we want to make sure that everybody on the applicant team is sworn in at the same time. So can you tell us who we're looking for here? Michael Berger, are you there? Unmute. 
Could you can you give us names and we'll we'll look. Okay. Sure. Should be Michael Berger. Okay. The owner. Uh huh. Kurt Stedding, the general contractor. Okay. We have Michael. We have Kurt. Anybody um, else? Janae Solomon. Okay. I think she should be there. Philip uh -huh. Volpe. He might be there. I just can't see everybody. Well, that's that we're we're looking, so we we just want to make sure that we have your. Sure, list. they were invited. All right, and for everybody who is identified, if you think you might be um, testifying in this matter, even if you think you might just speak up for a moment, um, if you could swear or affirm that the information you provide to the board this morning will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. I do. Yes. I do as I well. Do. Great. I do as well. Thank you very much. And Mr. Shepke, could you read the case in, please? This is case 46 of 2024 for 62 South 6th Street. The application is for interior renovations and construction of a second floor addition for a museum. They're requesting a special exception pursuant to section 911.02 to allow public assembly general a special exception uh, pursuant to section 914.07.g.2 to allow offsite parking and a variance from section 914.02.a. The maximum number of parking spaces allowed is 75 spaces and 84 spaces are proposed. We're proposing more parking than what is required? Oh, well, that's, that's part of the discussion. Okay. Um, we have your materials up. So um, again, you know your project better than we do. So we would appreciate if you explain a little bit of background where it is and what it is that you're proposing to do. Sure. I, I'll give a little bit of a background and summary on the if architectural. Could, and again, if, and for everybody who might be speaking for the court reporter's sanity and Alice as well, if you could identify yourself as you speak, we appreciate it. Thank you. Sure. Uh, my name is Max Mavrovic, the architect for the project. Sitting next to me is Michael Knoppel. He may be able to address some questions as well. Thank you for allowing us to present this design proposal for a new gallery. It's located on the south side. Well, on south. Again, I, I apologize, but I do want to clarify, we're not considering the design proposal. We're considering the special exception requested for the public assembly use. So we're looking at the requirements under code section 911.04A.5, I think, um, which um, relate to that use. So again, we're, we're taking the design into account, but Take it to the planning commission if you want to talk about design. We're we're looking at the use. Okay, we 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 were asked the process that we've been following. We were asked to go to the Southside Community Council, which we did. We were asked to go for a dam meeting, which we did. We addressed their questions. We addressed their comments that had to do with the site. Nothing that had to do. With the building, we had we had increased the paving along the building for sidewalk. We had increased the landscaping at the parking, which is directly across 6th Street. And this is on the south side on 6th Street. Mr. Berger is the primary owner of this block, well, the complete owner of this block on our side, the west side of the street. On the east side of the street, there is another commercial tenant, um, Allegheny Ford Truck Sales. And also Mr. Berger owns half of that side of the lot. And on the north side of the street is a dead end that fronts the river. So it's, it's basically two tenants of which Mr. Berger is 75% owner on this side of the street. Our parking, is split between on surface on the west side of our property where the building is located, as well as across the street on the east side of 6th Street. We had indicated a total of 84 spaces. And the wait, reason- wait, wait, wait. wait, what's the use? I mean, all we have on our um, 
agenda is that a, a public assembly general use is. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I, so I, what I, is the, it's, what's the square footage? I mean, when I say we're not reviewing the design, it's, we are looking at the use. So what are the hours of operation? Um, why is it that you need so much parking? What kind of, um, what kind of, I don't want to say what kind of people are going to be assembling, but what kind of assemblies are you proposing in the public assembly space? It's a museum. That's right. the primary function. There will be periodic events there of performance activities, possibly lectures, possibly opera, possibly plays. The parking across the street. There, excuse me. And again, we have a lag and I, I don't mean to talk over anybody and I, but I do interrupt. So what is there a, when you say there are different types of events that could be held, is there an operations plan that would say, is this an all night, um, 24 seven, you could have an event at two in the morning, um, yeah. space for 500 people, 200 people, 300 people, are there, is there seating? Is it just people milling about? Again, in assessing the parking needs, we need to have an understanding of the intended operations and how it is uh, proposed to be used. If you turn to our drawing set, there is a seating diagram indicated on drawing G011. Okay. That indicates the performance seating on the first floor, the potential performance seating with a maximum occupancy of 592 occupants. 592, is that correct? Correct, that's based on the square footage calculations. Great, thank you. The second floor has a gallery and museum non-performance space, permanent exhibit on the second floor with a maximum capacity of 274 occupants. Are, th are there times when both um, the performance space and the non-performance space would be operating concurrently? No, correct. That's a good question, and that answer is no. They, they are totally independent. The performance events are intended or planned to be in the evening events, and the operation of the museum is, Mr. Berger's online, but I believe it's three days, four days a week maybe during the day limited hours during daylight hours. And we, we can get confirmation later, but like I said, so um, again, from the special exception criteria, we're to have a good understanding of what are the potential traffic impacts of the proposed use and understanding, again, whether this is 24 seven, um, you know, all time use or more limited uses and the, the understanding of the capacity is also important. Again, um, it, it is not typical to have a request to exceed the maximum parking that is required. So uh, the, what 75 spaces are required and that was based on the analysis of both the occupancy for the performance space and the non-performance space. It is, and as the, the building occupancy drives that parking stipulation, however, being a riverfront industrial plan, the or zoning district, the reason that it is somewhat reduced is because there is a provision that says that the parking requirement is cut by 50%. Got it. Yep. I... I, I... I remember that provision of the RIV, yes. So we're trying to accommodate our attendees as well as work within the spirit of the regulation. And owner would be fine with cutting it back. We, we just had that space available. Our current parking plan is shown on, and we did reduce it somewhat. Our current parking plan based on G104 G104 we have 
70 spaces shown in the detached lot on the east side of 6th Street. And that's on a separate um, parcel, is that correct? Separate parcel owned by the same owner. So, and, and that's, there's a special exception to allow what, it's considered off-site because it's on a separate parcel, but it's an adjacent under the same ownership. Correct. And it's less than a hundred, it's less than a thousand square feet to get to our entrance. Okay. And we provide accessible parking in excess of what is required. And there, um, that lot is to be um, landscaped and designed in accordance with the parking requirements under the code. Yes, we have that shown on G one hundred four. Yep. Okay. Is the, and and again, that's uh, the 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 use issues and how the property is to be used is what we're reviewing in connection with a special exception. So, uh, again, the performance space and the capacity is an important aspect of that. Um, did you say that the owner would like uh, Mr. Berger? Um, could you? explain a little bit more about your vision for how the space would be used and how often in terms of operation. Can you, can you hear me? I can, thank you. Okay. Uh, well, it's called the Diversity Museum of Art and Culture. So what we're talking about here uh, is the culture. And uh, I'm working closely, for example, with uh, Janae Solomon, president of the National Black Opera Association, and we'll be showing operas in addition to, uh, I'm working uh, with the president of the uh, Chamber Music of Pittsburgh organization, uh, and we're talking to them about well, doing their- Mr. Mr. Berger, I'm with. Uh, I, I, well, you asked me about uh, just, who and, and when. Again, what I'm telling me. you is, we're not going to do anything at two in the morning. And, and again, doing... can I just ask a specific question that might help? And I and I appreciate the diversity of cultural events that you're proposing. Do you have a plan for? Um, again, is it? I think Mr. Maverick said um, for three or four days a week, um, nights, I mean, Saturdays, weddings. I mean, what are, are there uh, limits? The plan. Okay. The plan at the moment is to do Thursdays, Fridays, Saturdays, and Sundays. Okay. That is you. the museum will be open then uh, as to, which nights that depends on the organization that we're working with at that particular moment, whether it's the chamber music or one of the opera associations or what. So, but uh, nothing at two in the morning because well, I, I can't I, stay awake that late. No, I seriously. I say, do you, do you have a, um, uh, no earlier than 10, no later than 10, or, and again, I'm not asking you to hold well, you. The chamber music, the chamber music starts usually uh, at 7.30 at night, and the opera would start probably about the same time. I don't know, if you do Wagner, you could be there until uh, the next day, so. <laughs> <laughs> I hardly think so. Okay. Uh, I, these, these, uh, Performances are maximum uh, two hours. Okay. I, 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 again, we're just trying to get a, a sense of the order of magnitude that you're envisioning here. All right. Um, I, I, I cannot tell you, except that I would like to see uh, an opera performed every... Uh, 30 days, so if it's going to be performed, let's say it'll be performed on a, a Thursday night and the same opera, for those who couldn't see it Thursday, we do it on Saturday. And the chamber music, they have some of their things on uh, 
Thursday nights, some on Sundays. And of course, we might do jazz. And the same thing goes. Uh, we're going to do the kinds of things that you and I would like to go see and go home and go to bed in time to get up for work the next morning. There's a lot of presumptions there, Mr. Berger. But again, we're we're just trying to understand the the order of magnitude of what's being sure. proposed, and sure. and I do appreciate the the parking plan as well. Um, and you did say that you had uh, reviewed this with the Southside Community Council as well, and yes. had the a meeting. Was there a, was there a letter that came out of that, or was <laughs> that? We asked for it multiple times. They never sent one. The only comments that came up during the meeting had to do with uh, uh, the paving along 6th Street and the landscaping at the parking lot. There, there was no comment on the uh, function of, okay. the, of the interior of the space. And, and again, the, the board has um, specific items within its jurisdiction. There are others for the Planning Commission, but um, I don't have any other questions for the applicant. Um, I, I do want to, uh, can I add something that we do have a tra transportation study planned, but the consultants that we've reached out to said they would like to get the feedback. That's why we requested written letters from both DAM and Southside Community Council. And they said they are sort of they they would like they would prefer to respond to comments rather than take the lead uh, to make sure that the comments are addressed during the transportation study and their recommendations. One one other thing I want to say is the industrial park on the east side of our building between there's two buildings on the site you can see that on our cover page. There's a large parking area for additional spaces that is on our parcel, on our block. So there's a overflow for when it is a much larger event, when, when more attendees are in, in attendance rather than the 70 spaces. All right. Um, I'm going to turn to our list of attendees to see if there's anybody else who would like to raise a hand and participate in this matter. And I am not seeing any additional hands raised. So thank you all for being here this morning. And we will accept the exhibits and all of the testimony uh, presented. And we will issue a decision within the time permitted under the code. So thank you all for being here this morning. What, what is that time frame? The, the, under the code, we have 45 days. But okay. um, we tend to be more efficient than that. Thank we you very much. But we do have 45 days. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. All right. Uh, the next case of the morning is zone case 56 of 2024 for Bandera Street. Uh, the applicant is identified as Charles Jacques. Do we have the applicant for uh, Bandera Street? Anybody? Um, if you're here on behalf of the applicant for Bandera Street, could you raise your hand, please? I am not seeing anybody. Got to do it going once, going twice. Um, again, did you have any, um, Mr. Shockey? Did you have any contact with the applicant for this? Case? Yeah, I think we're looking for Rachel King, but I don't see her in the attendee list. <clears throat> Okay. Um, okay, we have a hand raised from GL Johnson. Hi, yes, um, I was actually here to speak against the uh, Bandera Street application. So I just wanted to put okay. that down. Well, and and um, I have to say we're in kind of an awkward uh, position here because we don't actually have a, an applicant. So, um, Without an applicant, there's nothing to object to. Uh, so uh, I, I, I have to say, if we're going to um, have a hearing on this, we have to have an applicant. We don't have an applicant. Um, so we're either going, if, if this uh, is to proceed, it would have to have new notice. Um, and 
another opportunity to be heard, but if we don't have an applicant. Uh, Madam Chair, I just got an email f a, a minute ago from the applicant saying that they're coming. So okay. maybe, maybe they'll be here shortly. Well, it's well past the time. It's 1025. It was scheduled for 10 o'clock. So Ms. Johnson, hang on for a moment. We'll see if we have an applicant show up. But I don't want to, I don't want to, I don't want to hold you up any longer. And I don't want to hold up the others who um, are here on time. So keep looking for that. Who, who are we looking for, Daniel? Uh, we're looking for Rachel King. Hello? Is this Ms. King? Yes, this is she. All right. Well, your application has been called, and uh, we're prepared to go. We The hearing time was 10 o'clock. So are you the only person who's going to be speaking on behalf of the applicant? And Unfortunately, yes. And I honestly probably am not the one to do this. Well, you can always um, withdraw the application and reschedule it. So, um, and I, there's a, a person who's appearing this morning who would like to object to what's being proposed. So what I'd really like to suggest is that we continue the request and give you an opportunity to speak to the person who um, is opposing the request. You have content. Okay. Um. So, Ms. Johnson, um, I'm going to ask you to unmute for a second. Um, yeah. it, the, the applicant, I, I, again, I think the applicant is going to agree with my suggestion to continue the hearing, but I think they should talk with you first. So could you, um, what's the best way to, for an exchange of information here? Um, if you could email uh, zoningboard at pittsburghpa.gov, uh, I'll put you in contact with the applicant. Zoningboard at pittsburghpa.gov? Yep, that's correct. Okay. We can, All right, we'll, yeah. put it in, we'll put it in the chat as well to make sure you have the spelling correctly. And then Ms. King? Yes. Together with um, the objector, and you can perhaps check back with the applicant. Um, and then we'll reschedule this hearing. And the email is in the chat, just uh, for your reference. Okay. Yep, I'm seeing that. So, and okay. so we, we, we'll put instead of you putting your um, information out on the chat, we're gonna we'll put you in touch with one another so you can have a discussion about what's being proposed here. Okay. Okay. So this has to be postponed now. It's going to be postponed until you have an opportunity to discuss what's being proposed. And that's because it's being, um, well, we're, we're going to continue the hearing so that, um, you have an opportunity to talk and, um, it, it might be withdrawn altogether or it will be rescheduled before the board. Hmm. Okay. I have, um, a participant with me who is actually one of the owners of the property. It would be Charlie Jakes's wife. So if there's someone who's opposing this, um, I believe she can help us out as well. All right. Well, I'm going to, like I said, we're going to put you all together and um, then we'll hope to discuss it and, and uh, get some resolution. We'll have to come back regardless because we're, we're past time. All right. Will that be today or at a scheduled nope. date? We will reschedule for a different day. Okay. We look forward to getting the information as to why it's being um, questioned. Okay. Yeah. Well, I'll, that's I'll be about, uh, All sorry, right. I'll be a couple hours in sending that info information over to the zoning board. Um, I'm out right now, but I'll, I'll send that over today for sure. Right. And your name again, please. For we're, we're, we're gonna, Excuse me. We're not going to do this over the Zoom. We're going to get you in touch with one another and we're gonna move on to the next hearing for this morning, all right. all right? Thank you, Zoning Board. Have a good one. All right, the next case of the morning is Zone Case 58 of 2024 for 2709 Penn Avenue. The applicant is identified as Joel McCullough. We have Joel McCullough. 
Could you say something so we know you're there, Mr. McCullough? Hello? Uh, we just uh, admitted yeah. a minute. Hello? There, there we Do go. Do you hear me? Yep, yes, there we go. Can. Perfect. And um, I'll start my video. There, are you the only person who yeah. is um, speaking with respect to this application? Correct. And do you swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. All right. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Shepke, could you read the case in, please? This is case 58 of 2024 for 2709 Penn Avenue. The application is for the renovation of an existing structure for first floor retail and second floor dwelling unit. And they're requesting a variance from section 914.02. One off street parking space is required and zero uh, proposed. All right, Mr. McCullough. Okay. Um, so, so hello. My my name is Joel McCullough. I I am uh, the owner of the building and a registered architect. Uh, I'll just kind of go through um, an outline of the presentation. I'll I'll kind of start with the building information. Go. Well, into... I tell you what. Why don't Why don't we start with the property where it is? Yep. yep. And so, if uh, you go to the second page. Okay. Yep. And this is. Uh, strip district between yes this is in the strip district uh on penn avenue between 27th and 28th street um it's a uh, zoning use riverfront uh industrial mixed use it's not a landmarked building um also to note uh the building uh is the full extent of the lot it was built out at one point um and also the building was uh priorly occupied by the neely canvas company if you go to the next page, I can kind of get more into more details. So um, also just to note for record, uh, the placard was posted on Friday, March 15th, as you can see in these Im images. Uh, and, and to talk about um, very briefly about the occupancy. Um, so if, and, and um, I am gonna slow you down a little bit, yep. Dan, for the court reporter sanity and mine. Yep. Uh, um, the only issue that is before the board is um, with the addition of the dwelling unit, one off street parking yes. space is required. Mm -hmm. And um, you've just testified that the building extends both to the side property lines and it looks like yeah. it extends front to rear as well. Yes, so yes, correct. I understand that there is no spot on site for a parking yeah. space. Um, so can you explain your reasoning as to why no parking space should be required for adding that residential unit. Yes. Yep. Um, if you, you know. I, I guess I'll, I, I kind of can go through, I, I have an outline of, of like going through the constraints of the, along the, the front. Well, I think, I think or, we or, appreciate that there's no space to put a parking space on yeah. the site. So, yep. it, and I, I don't want to get you off your uh, mm -hmm. materials, but we get that part. Yeah. Um, so what I'd like to understand is, um, are you saying that on-street parking is sufficient? Are you saying that this is proximate to a major transportation route? Are you saying that it's only being used for one residential unit and there's a parking space available in the hub garage, which isn't so far away? Yeah. Stick with the parking. Yeah, 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 yeah definitely. Um, so so one, I, if you go to, I think it's... If you scroll down, I think one, there is an availability of parking. This isn't the middle of the strip district. Um, it, I think it's eight or nine. Is it eight or nine? Page eight or nine? Uh, go to nine. Um, it, it is not the center of the strip district. There is an availability of parking. It's 10, actually, forgive me. Um, I, I took a kind of, it's, you know, street, street parking is available. Uh, just kind of looking at various times and, and various days of the week, um, it, it's really, um, quite open. Um, there is, if you go to, and, and there's parking garages in the area. If if you go to, if you jump back to page nine or, or eight, sorry, there's parking garages in the area as, as kind of noted in the plan. There's parking lots um, kind of a, in, in adjacent lots there. Um, it, it's all, all very kind of um, uh, accommodating for <laughs> Let me, let me ask spot. you another question, yeah. and because you're going from a um, commercial building to yeah. a residential unit, how is how is the um, building used previously, yeah. or mm -hmm. in terms of traffic? I mean, were there 
offices in the upstairs? Was that a storage uh-huh. space? Were there people coming and going all the time? I mean, yeah. and there were there parking needs for the prior mm-hmm. use? Yeah. Um, as far, if you go to page seven, is it page seven or six? Go to six. It, it's 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 kind of peculiar because the second floor is was existingly kind of planned as a apartment. Um, there there is a kitchen. There's a bedroom. There's you know bathroom with a bathtub. Um, and so, as far as I could tell, it was occupied as a residence at one point. It may not be sort of permitted or, or kind of certified uh, for occupancy. Uh, or over over time, it's not clear kind of what the records what have is, of, of this building. What um, what is the age of the building? It, it's from 1915. It was built. Okay, um, and but again, yep. I, we have this lag, and I apologize for that. Um, but the if you have a 1915 building, you have some indication that the second floor had been used for residential at yes. some point. Um, are there any certificate of certificates of occupancy or none that you were able yep. to? Nothing for the second floor. There is a certificate of occupancy for the first floor as a commercial space. So, it, and it has been used as, um, it was used for the Neely canvas as like a kind of commercial space. Um, it, it, you know, it, it was, there's indication of the building, you know, having kind of uh, working space or just general like storage of, of canvas and, you know, other equipment um, so there, there, that, that is being maintained. But there's some space. indicia, there's, there's some indicia that the second floor may have been intended or may have been used for a residential space at some point. Correct. Correct. Yeah. The, the, the proposal is really to maintain it except for one additional bathroom. Um, so even the kitchen is kind of in the same area, the, the one bathrooms in the same area. So trying to minimize the amount of change really, um, and the, really, the again, the only issue from our perspective is mm-hmm. the question about parking. But yes, and that's what I wanted to have a full understanding of that. Yep. And so I did talk with Jeff Campbell of the Strip District Neighbors, and and he did send an email this morning, um, expressing uh, no no issue or, or uh, no issue with the variance. Um, okay. Well, it's a it. Uh, okay. I, no additional questions. I was going to say, I'm turning to the other board members. No questions. All right. Thank you. Um, and I'm going to look to see if there's anybody attending who would like to comment with respect to this application. If you could raise your hand. I am not seeing any hands raised. Okay. So, Mr. McCullough, thank you very much. Um, we will take your full materials into account as we issue a decision, and we will issue a decision within the time permitted under the code. Okay. So, thank you so thank much you for being here this morning. All right. Uh, okay. All right. Last case of the day is uh, sorry. Sorry, we're, we're having a little board shift here, but um, the last case of the morning is zone case 55 of 2024 for 5302 Duncan Street. Um, the applicant is identified as Andreas Uribe. And do we have, uh, uh, while well, we, Mr. Uribe, could you identify yourself for the record, please? Yes, thank you. My name is Andres Uribe. Hello. Um, is there anybody else who's going to be testifying with you this morning? No, just me. All right. And um, do you swear or affirm that the information you'll provide to the board will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth? I do. Thank you. Mr. Shepke, could you read the case in, please? This is case 55 of 2024 for 5302 Duncan Street. The application is for the new construction of three attached houses and the requesting variances from section 903.03.e.2. Five foot front setback is required and zero foot is requested. And a five foot interior side setback is required and zero foot is requested. And a variance from section 914.09.j.1. Garages and parking spaces must be accessed from the rear yard if rear yard access is available. Okay. And um, we have an indication on our agenda that in 2022, we um, approved variances for a different configuration, but 
Can you explain what's going on here and and the basis for the requested variances? Yes. So unfortunately, the the original projects faced some some delays as the construction company I had hired to do the renovation of the two existing structures. And what would have been the new structure in the middle, he was let go given uh, his lack of ability to deal with the city for permit applications. We ended up receiving stop work orders. I, I ended up letting him go. And <clears throat> from there, the project got stuck. We're picking it back up with um, with a new scope of work that will involve that will involve tearing down the existing structures and building three new townhomes, uh, which is why the change is is happening. Throughout all that process, over a year went went by, and Mr. Shep he explained that the the variance approvals uh, are for one year. So we are just restarting the process as we are very close to securing funding for for the new project. Well, can I, can I back you up a little bit um, for the twenty twenty two approval? Um, <laughs> you're proposing to renovate existing structure and build one new, and now you're proposing three new structures. That's correct. Okay, <laughs> but they it's all Duncan Street. Um, the the setbacks um, that you're proposing, um, that with no setback, essentially, you're proposing a structure that would extend to the street. Um, and that's based on the topography of the site and the proposed front setback. We're only seeing one structure here. So in the context, uh, that's the rear, um, there are other structures along Duncan Street that also extend to the front property line? Yeah, if we go to the to the last slide. Uh this is the the those four new townhomes essentially extend to the to the um zero setbacks if if I'm correct. Uh the house to the right would be the other structure uh that that um, I am talking about. So essentially what we're trying to do is we're trying to match, uh, you know, a similar look to what these four existing townhomes have have accomplished. And, and if we go to, uh, to slide, one sec. Five. It gives a better idea of how close they are to <clears throat> to the allow setback and the variance that they they were they also received. And now, the, for, the, yes. It just again structure to be demolished um, on your site um, had the structure itself extended to the front property line and then there was a retaining wall or stairs or something that extended into the um Duncan Street right away is that correct yeah the, the there used to be concrete stairs that <clears throat> that uh that were demolished and, and this then, extended to the to the front of the sidewalk and then okay, I think I understand the front and then the proposal for the interior side setbacks you're proposing to have attached structures with a zero foot setback yeah um, I, I, and i'm assuming you would or would the structures comply with the five foot setback requirement on the outer sides as i i understand that you're proposing to connect three units and you would have zero at the connected part, but on the outer parts or the outer sides of the three units, would you comply with the setbacks? Yeah, so there there will be a, a three foot setback if if I remember correct. Be, I mean, we, we can get textual. Yeah. Okay. So it would be three, not five. I'm yeah, we can get an idea on on slide seven and and eight. So uh, <clears throat> slide seven, if we can go there, we'll we'll show essentially what the houses are are, are going to look like, and the 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 units on the sides will will be narrower, given that we have to to stick to that setback. Slide eight will show the space the 
the space that will be between the property, like my property line and and the the outer wall no. of the side no. structure. Okay. Let's let's go to the, the um other question is about um the and the development next door has um parking from the front and as i recall there's some steep slope conditions and um some issues with rear access can you remind us what those are yeah so the that would be on slide three and four if we can start with three mm -hmm. so slide three just shows the the access from Poe way Poe way is a single lane street where uh um a garage structure would be would make it difficult to access, uh, a little unsafe to access, given the lack of visibility from oncoming cars or or pedestrians, if if any. It's just a, a narrow street. We we are considering instead of of potentially doing parking pads in the in the rear before we go to the to the parking pads on slide four. It just shows what was done on on the townhomes next door, where they excavated all the way all the way down to the ground level and added retaining walls against Poe Way. Uh, just given the lack of uh, of width from Poe Way to to do to use um, parking garages in the rear. Okay. On on slide six, <clears throat> excuse me. On slide six, it, it goes. It shows a little bit the slope that we'll that we're dealing with from the sidewalk on Duncan Street to the edge of Poe Way. It's around a nineteen foot slope uh, that we're dealing with there, which is why it it just makes it difficult to to add something back there, uh, taking into account the new structure that we that we're planning uh, on. On slides, on slide twelve, okay, is where we would consider putting a uh, parking pads that would much would be much easier to to access uh, for cars to be able to properly see uh, people coming walking on Poe Way uh, or cars driving on on Poe Way with a parking pad and, and no garage structures to to obstruct view. We think that would that would be the best option, but we're just we're sort of playing with the design idea on that since adding a parking pad would would bring the retaining wall a little too close to to the structures. Um, but if 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 a parking pad in the back would be required, this would be the option that that we would go with, along with the front facing garages. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right. I, I don't have any other questions. Mr. Richardson, do you have any questions of this applicant? No questions. Okay, thank you. Um, do we have anybody attending who would like to comment with respect to this application? And I am not seeing any hands raised. So um, we are going to accept the testimony and evidence as part of the record, and we will issue a decision within the time permitted under the code. So. Thank you for being here again, Mr. Uribe. Thank you very much for allowing me to speak. All right. Um, that uh, concludes the zoning hearings for April 11th, 2024. Um, we're going to close the Zoom, and thank you all for being here this morning.